Hi everyone, my name is Steve McLeod. This is my friend John Whidden. Hello. And we're coming to you from Halifax, Nova Scotia with another episode of This Sonic Obsession. Today we, uh, we are embarking on a very difficult exercise. Very difficult. We're going to do uh, two videos uh, covering our top 10 favorite albums of all time. The first one will be the first five and then the closing five. Um, I don't know about John, but I had a very difficult time paring this down to just 10 albums. I had a very difficult time. It was, it was arduous. It was like, okay, I can't leave that one out. Well, I have to leave that one out. And I don't have anything by this artist and I love this artist. And, uh, I have to tell you that my top 10 now will probably be different in a week's time because that's the way it's, it's always been. There's one or two that will get thrown out and another couple that will yeah, come in. I, I'm not quite like that, but there are, there are a bunch that could be eight, nine, 10, and next week it could be eight, nine, 10, three to, but I mean, my, my top album has always been my favorite album for a long time and uh, continues to be, but the, the, I was, you know, which order to put them in. Yeah. And I was telling you yesterday, I just came to the conclusion that I, I really just have to pick the 10 albums that I've played the most in my life. I mean, what could be more favorite than that? Well, that's that's what it boiled down to me. But there were a couple that just, yeah. just didn't make it. I mean, yeah. ten's not enough. I was maybe we should do a baker's dozen, but that's you know obviously not a top ten. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just very difficult. Uh, but here it is. This is what it is, and we're going to stop uh, start rather with our uh, tenth favorite album. So, John, I guess you you want me to start things yeah, off? Why not? Okay. I'm have a drink. This Here's is. Uh, referred to as the Orange Album by the Jeff Beck Group. Uh, Beck has not really embraced this album over the years. I've read a couple of interviews where he doesn't really like it all that much himself. I love it. Um, it's just an incredible album. Um, his guitar playing is amazing. It came out after the uh, couple albums he made with uh, the Jeff Beck Group, which featured uh, Ronnie Wood and Rod Stewart. Uh, it's got Bobby Tench on vocals, Cozy Powell on drums, uh, Clive Chayman on uh, bass, and Max Middleton, an extraordinary keyboard player who played with uh, Beck and many other people over the years after this group disbanded. Uh, it, it's just a, an incredible album. His guitar playing is uh, top drawer, and the singing is excellent. Uh, Tench is just a great vocalist, and um, it just cooks from the minute you put it down, and there is just a blistering version of Going Down, the Don Nix song, song on this album, that I put up there as uh, perhaps the greatest song that Beck ever recorded. I just love it. It's just full of energy. We should say that we don't know what our, our picks are, each right. other's picks, so, you know, that, that surprises me. I, I know you'll, I mean, we both love Jeff Beck, but I'm surprised that's... Uh in your top 10. What year did that come out? What, 71 or so? Ooh, 70, 71, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it was either this or Blow by Blow when it came to Jet, when mm -hmm. came to Beck, but this one, I, I, I listened to it first because it came out obviously before Blow by Blow, which I love, but once again, it was, okay, which one do I go with? Um, anyway, I, I just love this album as I love Jeff Beck, so, and I've listened to it constantly over the years. All right, my 10th pick is actually, uh, it came out on March 11th, 1970, the day before my 15th birthday. I think I mentioned this, because this is an album that John reviewed earlier this year. It's Deja Vu, oh, Deja Vu. Deja Vu by Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young. This is the remastered deluxe edition that came out earlier this year and the one that John reviewed. And um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely one of the albums I've played the most. Uh, I wore this thing out when it came out. It was, it's just a masterpiece of country rock, folk rock, whatever you want to call it. And it, it launched them into superstardom. Um, they became a, a major stadium touring act as a result of this. I mean, I have the box set over there of, of the 1974 famous tour where they... They were one of the first bands, I guess, that was probably doing large outdoor stadiums. I think they were the first band that, I mean, that did that kind of tour. Yeah, yeah, probably the Stones were around that time when they started doing the large outdoor shows, maybe. Uh, Grateful Dead, I suppose, probably had some large ones. But that was that's the one that really sticks in my mind as the first large you know, stadium tour that, that made an impression on me. And I've written some stuff down on some of these albums. It came out on March 1970. 
It topped the charts. It had three top 40 charting singles, Teach Your Children, Our House, and Woodstock, which was, oddly enough, it was a Joni Mitchell song. That's not what makes it odd, but the Crosby, Stills, Nash & One were the first to actually put it out. But it also came out twice that year, 1970, two other times in 1970. Joni Mitchell put it out shortly after that. And then there is, do you remember the other one? Matthews Southern Comfort, wasn't yeah. it? Ian Matthews, a British group. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's my favorite version of it. Oh, I really? I just love that song. Oh, okay. It's just a fantastic song. And of course it has the Neil Young classic, Helpless, which um, I don't know, I mean, might be, certainly it's one of Neil Young's greatest songs. Oh, by all means. That happened to be on that. And, uh, and I also wrote down here that in 2003, I don't know what it was on the latest Rolling Stone list, but in 2003, it was 148th. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> what a bunch of dopes. I guess you don't agree with that one. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's Deja Vu. Fantastic album. Okay. So my uh, ninth pick, I guess, is uh, American Beauty by the Grateful Dead. Love the Dead. Uh, have uh, way too much material by the Dead. Most of it is uh, live. Uh, but I love this album. A lot of people would say Working Man's Dead is the best studio album. I disagree. I think this is a, is a much, I shouldn't say much better album. It just, uh, I don't know, it works better for me. I love Working Man's Dead, don't get me wrong. But this one just, I don't know. It's, I think the songs are written better. There seems to be more of a, of a group effort on this one as well. And it's, it, I don't know, it's just, uh, it, it just works from start to finish. American Beauty by The Grateful Dead. A good choice, I guess. Well, it's not my top ten, but, you know. Uh, my uh, next one is, my number nine choice, is one of the greatest pop rock albums of all time, Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. This happens to be uh, the 2011 edition, I think, that came out that was mastered by uh, Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman, and... It's just a stunning version of this record, which is already stunning no matter what version you get. It's, it's, it truly is one of the, the best sounding records in rock, all of rock. It's one of those albums that, um, I think I've said it before, it's, it's like a perfect album. Every song is a hit. very good on every, this album. Every, every I mean, song's a hit. Yeah, I mean, I haven't listened to it in years, but I remember when it first came out thinking that's just, every song is great. You know, and it just flows from start to you finish. You had three really good songwriters in Lindsey Buckingham, Stevie Nicks, and Christine McVie. Yep. And virtually everything on this was a hit at one time or another, like uh, Don't Stop, uh, Go Your Own Way. It's also one of the, uh, you know, there's a fine tradition in rock and roll of breakup albums. <laughs> yes. And, and That fits in there. Yeah, and this is one of the, this is one of the best breakup albums of all time. The, the band was imploding and it created this incredible tension that resulted in great art, which, which often happens in uh, situations like this. It's impeccably produced. Uh, Stevie, this was the album that, uh, sorry, Lindsey Buckingham really came to prominence as this incredible guitar player, yeah. incredible songwriter, incredible singer, and... Um, and a great songwriter, and it it's, hasn't been equaled by many albums, I don't think, in my opinion. Anyway, Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. Okay, my eighth choice is uh, Dixie Chicken by Little Feet. Uh, this is an extraordinary album. Mm -hmm. Once again, there's not a bad track on it. Um, I, I think it's, once again, a perfect album uh, by a tremendous band, a band that has never got its due. And probably never will. Uh, I believe they're still touring now with, uh, obviously, uh, people filling in the, the holes from the people that have uh, left or have unfortunately passed away over the years. I've seen them live a couple times. The first time, they were amazing. Uh, the second time, they were, they were pretty good. But, but this album, to me, is uh, it's, it's the peak of Little Feet. Other than a live album they did, Waiting for Columbus, which could have been on this list as well because it is up there in the top five of all live albums ever produced. But this album and this band, it's, it's really unfortunate because they've always got sterling reviews from critics. I mean, they've always been a critic's choice starting with their first album. 
And for some reason, they just never caught on with the general public. I, I really don't know what it is. It's, it's not really that hard to grasp the music. It's just got a real good rhythm to it. The lyrics are great. The musicians are just incredible. Uh, Lowell George was a tremendous guitar player. Uh, Richie Hayward, one of the great drummers in rock and roll. Uh, some great vocalists in this band with, with uh, Paul Bure, Bill Payne, not Bill Payne, but Paul Bure. Um, uh, Lowell George, of course, before he passed away. And then later on with uh, Craig Fuller, he handled a lot of the lead vocals. I just think this album is great. One of my favorite albums of all time. I still play it all the time. I think I think part of the problem with them is they were lumped in as a southern act, right? You know, and, yeah. Um, they were actually from California, I yeah. think, right? Yeah. And but they were sort of lumped in, I guess, by Dix, Dixie Chicken and names like that. That they were in with Molly Hatchet and <laughs> oh, <laughs> Leonard Skinner and, and the Allman Brothers, which is a good thing to be lumped in with. But I think a lot of there, there was a a bit of a aversion in in a lot of people to southern rock. I think. Yeah. And I think they were uh, misconstrued construed a bit as a as a southern rock band when uh, they were kind of rootsy oh yeah they, yeah and that's a good point and funky but they were very funky as oh, well oh very funky very um, funky just a, yeah great musicians and a great band and yeah like you say waiting for columbus is one of the great live albums of all time and the unfortunate thing i'm, I'm not really a big fan of the <laughs> rock and roll hall of fame and i don't want to get into that now but they're, they're not in the rock rock and roll hall of fame they should be they should have gone in a long time ago uh, and you look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and it has groups like the Go-Go's and Blondie. I'm sorry. Like, they, they're just no comparison. I mean, they're not, those two bands aren't even in the same league as Little Feet. No so. comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, now in the 1970s, these guys were my favorite band. Um, once I, once I heard their first album, it was lights out. I mean, I just played these guys constantly. Um, when I was going to university, it was like, you know, it was always spinning albums by these guys. And I must have driven my roommates and people around me crazy because it's, it, it's what I was playing about 90% of the time. And it's Steely Dan. Now I could have picked any one of, the, of their albums, um, but because of supply chain issues, which is a very popular phrase these days. I will explain that in a second. I don't have the album that I would really have probably picked, which was Pretzel Logic. I don't even have it on CD. Oh, really? Well, have you ever tried to find a Steely Dan vinyl album in a record store these days? No, not really. I haven't looked. This is uh, Can't Buy, Buy a Thrill, by the way. Um, it's, they're just, there have been no remasters on most of this stuff for 40 years. Not remasters, no vinyl issues, period. Of Steely Dan material. Well, there was there was a there was a reissue of Can't Buy a Thrill that came out in around two thousand or two thousand and two, of this on Speakers Corner, a German label, which came out in two thousand and two. There's been no, as far as I can tell, no North North American issues of most of their catalog, with the exception of Gaucho and uh, and Asia, of this stuff. Like nineteen eighty was this, you know, Katie lied, uh, all of this stuff, these great albums haven't been reissued and Donald Fagan what's going on so you don't have that on vinyl I used to but I wore the thing out oh, I mean, okay it, I, I have a copy actually the, the you know the threads pretty much the grooves pretty much fell that's out. that's what happens when you play an album a yeah. lot right but there is nothing and I don't know what is going on why somebody hasn't given this band the reissue program that that it deserves so Donald Fagan I I Pretty sure you're probably one of our 17 subscribers, <laughs> don't you think? I would hope. Well, I hope. Well, so, I would yeah. hope so. Yeah, yeah. Well, now he probably will. He'll check it out. The yeah. word will spread. The word will spread. Uh, get on it. Talk to Chris Bellman or Kevin Gray. I know Kevin Gray's a busy guy, but I'm sure he'd squeeze you guys in. Um, people like that, uh, Bernie Grundman, Chris Bellman. Um, there needs to be reissues on this. Like you cannot find a vinyl Steely Dan album. It could be something to do with the rights and that kind of thing with uh, who owns the rights to reproduce it. I mean, well, the label was, and that the kind last of thing. was, like I said, 1980. Sure yeah. to God. I mean, I, we're not getting any younger. Do no, I? but I we, think originally they were on <laughs> ABC? ABC, Don Hill. Uh, so who, I, I have no idea who owns. I don't know, but there's those 
albums now. It's a sin that this stuff hasn't been reissued yeah. properly, whether it's by just you know a label or like a a regular commercial label or a label or Mobile Fidelity or one of these great reissues labels by a top producer because. Um, yeah, here I am holding up a CD. I've got no choice, John. I could have brought my vinyl copy <laughs> over had I known, but we didn't tell each other. So. Oh, I guess I, this is just a fantastic album, like all other albums. This, uh, very quickly, um, was before they certainly got into their jazzy period. As they went on, they got jazzier and jazzier. Um, this is more, you know, uh, rock orientated, but the, and, but there was still, um, you started to see the jazz styling has come in on the on the guitar solos you know they had a regular band back then but they also were still bringing in incredible session players like victor feldman and uh, there's a you know do it again is is one of my favorite songs on this and this incredible mind-blowing guitar sitar solo by denny diaz uh yeah just just my band of the 70s it's just unfortunate that they're not getting the treatment that they deserve in 2021. So get on it, Donald. So you put the call out for that one. Yeah. Okay, my next pick is from a, uh, an artist that, uh, he didn't make a bad album. Mm. Not Some people would disagree with that. Uh, I, I don't think he made a bad album because his, uh, his lyrics were just incredible. Um, even the album that he made just before he, uh, just before he passed away, unfortunately, um, and but uh, is, is tremendous, and he was kind of dealing with death. But uh, his name is Warren Zevon, and this is his second album. And once again, I was torn. Is it the first album, or is it Excitable Boy? Was that his second album? This was, oh, yeah. sorry, this was his third okay. album. There was an album that came out that really didn't get a lot of attention. I think it was, it might have been on ABC, or a, a label that, a very small label, probably not ABC, because it was big at the time. But anyway, then he came out with one called Just Warren Zevon, which was incredible, or is incredible as well. But this, to me, uh, is, is, is just an amazing album. Yeah. It's got uh, Excitable Boy on it. It's got Werewolves of London, uh, Johnny Strikes Up the Band, uh, Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. Hardly anybody can compare to Warren Zevon when it comes to lyrics, because you never knew exactly what he was going to write about. He covered everything. Uh, he would talk about... Uh, very uh, tender, he could write a song very tenderly about love, or he could write about uh, a werewolf of a London, werewolf of London uh, or uh, and Trader Vicks. Trader Vicks, yes. a pina colada. Right, was exactly. A pina colada? It was a pina yeah. colada. Um, and of course, uh, Mercenary with Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. I think this is just an, an amazing album. Um, he, he, once again, never got his due, unfortunately. Um, was it 97? Or sorry, uh, um, this album came out? Uh, sorry, 77? Oh, gee. You caught me in that one. Um, 78. 78, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, he, once again, uh, I don't know if he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It doesn't really matter because I don't put too much stock in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame anyway. But just an incredible lyricist, a tremendous singer, one act that I regret to this day that I never saw live. There were a couple of occasions where I had a chance to see him if the planning had been better, but didn't make it. And uh, as I said, unfortunately he passed away, but any album to me by Warren Zevon is a very good album. This is a great album. Excellent choice. Now my next one is uh, an, another artist that I could have picked uh, six or seven albums from the 1970s. Yeah, for this well, guy. exactly. Yeah, it's, it's Neil Young. And I chose Harvest because this, I guess this is the one I've heard most. I mean, I could have picked anything, you know, by, by the set, from the 70s that, uh, just an incredible performer, particularly during that period. This was his large, uh, biggest commercial selling album. Came out in 1972. Uh, you know, it had the massive radio hit, Heart of Gold on it and stuff like that. Another, you know, a classic, uh, country pop album, folk folk album that uh, topped the charts and made him a star or put him in the middle of the road, as he said afterwards, that he didn't like being in the middle of the road and he headed <laughs> to the ditch thereafter and, 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 you know. Came up with the ditch trilogy. The ditch trilogy of, what was it, On the Beach, Tonight's the Night, and uh, Time Fades Away. Time Fades Away, I believe, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, just a, a tremendous, incredible act. And one of the best, I mean, the one thing about Neil Young, um, for a guy who doesn't seem to take a great amount of time recording albums, his albums are phenomenal sounding. Mm. Um, just incredible. There's not a lot of overdubs and all of that. Anyway, Harvest, a great album by a great artist. I have to agree with you on that one. And, and that, that, that was, what was that? That was number, what was that? Where are we? Number seven. That was number seven. Yeah. yeah. So okay. this brings, takes me to my next choice, which is Neil Young as well, but ah. a, a different album. Mine could have been that. This is another one that could have gone, you know, in the top five. Uh, anyway, I, I love this album. I, I mean, I, well, I love Neil Young. Um, Harvest, I like Harvest as well. This is the one that I really love, though, because this is the one that uh, I just played over and over and over again. This is a coffee that's in pretty good shape. It's not my original coffee, because I wore that out playing it. Um, this is just full of, I mean, vintage Neil Young. Only Love Can Break Your Heart, Southern Man. Um, what else is on this album? Uh, Birds is on this album. I mean, it's just incredible. Every mm. song is great. It's one of the, one of those, again, that is a perfect album. There's not a bad cut on it. Uh, the musicians on the album are A1. He brought together this group of people that uh, complimented him uh, in the studio and, of course, uh, added their little taste to it. Nils Lofgren is on this album. Um, I think he had a little bit of a solo career before he, he uh, guested on this, but then... Uh, after working on this album, he worked with Young, of course, over the years uh, a few times, and now, of course, he's a member of um, the E Street brand, Band, and I believe he's with uh, Crazy. He's still with Crazy Horse now, which has a new album coming out, Neil Young and Crazy Horse, coming out, I think, maybe in the next month or so. Anyway, after the Gold Rush, just a tremendous album. All right, my, um, my last album for the first half of these Best of Ten videos, number six, is Chicago Transit Authority. I don't know which one, yeah, that's the back. This is the front. Um, just, Chicago was never the same after no, this. No, no, that almost made my list too, but Th it didn't. This is just simply, if, like, if you've never heard this album, please do not think of the schmaltzy, ballady Chicago that was a staple, and still is a staple on yeah. classic rock radio stations. This is an incredible rock album with incredible horn, horn playing, incredible guitar playing by Terry Kath, the late lamented Terry Kath. Speaking of a guy, you wonder what he would be doing today if, if he had lived. Yeah. It's a double album, Chicago Transit Authority, which was their original name, but they got sued by the real Chicago Transit Authority in, in Chicago and had to cut it to uh, Chicago. Every song on this is fantastic. Um, I played the life out of this thing. It, when it came out in 1968, 69. And um, their second album was very good too, but after that it was, speaking of going in the yeah. ditch. Yeah, um, well, they made two very good albums, this one and of course the second album, the great album. Yeah, uh, fantastic and number six on my all-time list. So that's, um, that's the end of our first half of this video. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. And we will see you very soon with the last half of this Sonic Obsession. And we hope you've enjoyed it and given you some ideas as to, as to what you may want to buy. So, right. thank you for watching. Cheers.